Now, one of the most valuable pieces of equipment for your mathematics exam is a calculator. Now, the calculator is only valuable if you actually know how to use it properly. So what we're going to do now is to take a look around the keys on a standard scientific calculator and make sure you can use them properly and get those all important correct answers in your exam. Now it might not be identical to the ones that you have, but then you need to make sure that you read the manual that comes with your calculator properly and make sure you know how to use all the buttons on your own individual calculators. <laughs> The first button we're going to look at is the mode button. Now the reason why this is such an important button is because you must ensure your calculator is in the correct mode before you perform any calculations in your exam. Now that mode needs to be the degree mode and by pressing the mode button on your calculator it will allow you to select the option either referred to as degree or DEG and that will put your calculator in the correct mode. So do ensure before you do any calculations that you are in the right mode, which is the degree mode. The next button we're going to look at is the second button. Now if we take a look again at the layout on this calculator, you see the second button is actually a purple button on our calculator. Now sometimes on calculators this is referred to as the shift button. And what it does is it allows you to access a whole new set of operations that are found above the standard keys on the keypad. So if we look at this calculator here, you can see that all those operations coloured purple are accessed by first pressing the second button and then the key that lies underneath the operation we want. We're going to look at this in more detail with certain specific operations but it's important to know that we need to press that second button in order to access those operations. So let's look at how we raise a number to the power of another number using our calculator. Now on our calculator here, we're using the X to the power of Y button. So if we wanted to, for example, enter 2 to the power of 7, we would enter on our calculator 2, then press the button x to the power of y, and then the number 7. And it would give us the correct answer. Now make sure again, because it may be different on your calculator, that you know which button raises a number to the power of another number. <laughs> Now let's look at how to square a number using a calculator. Now it should be quite obvious, especially on this calculator layout here, that the X squared button is the button we need in order to square a number. So in this case, if we wanted to do 5 squared, we would press 5 and then the X squared button and it would give us our answer of 25. <laughs> Let's look now at how we would cube a number. Now on our calculator here, you can see that the x cubed is actually in purple above the x squared button. So that means we need to use that second button in order to access that operation. So if we wanted to cube three, we would press three, then the second button, then our x squared button, which would enable us to access that x cubed operation, which would give us our answer of 27. Now it's worth remembering that on your calculators, your X cubed button may not be above that X squared button. So ensure, again, you read your manuals and make sure you know where the cubed button is on your own calculators. <laughs> Now a button that's quite often used in exams is the square root button and you should all be able to identify that quite easily on your calculators by looking for that square root symbol. Now on this calculator we have here we would actually type in the number and then press the square root button in order to get our square root. 
but on some calculators you actually need to press the button before you enter the number. So again, as always, make sure you know how your own individual calculators work. <laughs> You may also need to perform a cube root in some calculations. And in this calculator that we have here, the cube root button is accessed by going through the second button and pressing the square root button. So if we take a look here, if I wanted to cube root 8, I would type 8, then press the second button, the square root button, which would then access the cube root for me, and I would come up with my answer of 2. Now again, sometimes the cube root button isn't with the square root button and you need to make sure you know where it is on your calculator. Now for higher GCSE candidates, you need to know how to perform calculations using trigonometry. And if we look at the keys on our calculator here, you can see quite clearly indicated the sine, cosine and tangent ratios on the keys here. Now remember the difference between those trigonometry questions when you're finding a length or an angle, because you'll notice above each of those trigonometry buttons you have sine inverse, cosine inverse and tangent inverse, which you will need to access by using either your second button or your shift key. So, if you're calculating an angle, remember you are using the inverse ratio, and if you're working out a length, you will just be using one of those standard sine, cosine, or tangent buttons. Now we'll look at how you enter fractions into your calculator, and there is a special button to enable you to do this. On some calculators, like the one we have here, it is the A and B over C button. But on others, you will actually see something that looks like a fraction, possibly with a square above another square, or indeed those squares in the format of a mixed number. So make sure you know where those buttons are on your calculator. Now on ours, if we wanted to enter, for example, three quarters, we would press the number three, then our fraction button, and then the number four. If you want to use a mixed number in one of your calculations, you just need to press that fraction button twice. So for example, three and a half would be accessed by going three, the fraction button, one, the fraction button, and then the number two. When it comes to performing calculations, for example, in questions where there are circles, you need to be able to access the pi button on your calculator. So using this particular calculator, you see for us to insert a value for pi, we need to press the second button, then that exp button, and you see then that the pi symbol comes up on the screen of our calculator. And then we can use that in any calculation. <laughs> Another important button on the calculator is the ANS button, which stands for answer. And what it does do is enable you to use an answer from a previous calculation in the next calculation you wish to perform, which is especially useful if you have a calculator display full of numbers. So use that button to take the answer you've just worked out into the next calculation you need it for. Now it's worth noting that calculators always perform calculations using bid mass. So if you want the calculator to do a sum in a particular order, you will need to use the brackets buttons on your calculator keypad. Now you can see them quite clearly on our calculator here, and all we need to do is to put those around the particular sum that we want the calculator to perform before anything else. <laughs> Now, 
Many calculators now give you the answer to a calculation in either a fraction or third form. Now, if you need to turn that into a decimal, for example, to round it to a certain degree of accuracy, then you need to use the SD button on your calculator. Now, our calculator here doesn't need that SD button because it doesn't give us the answer in that form. But if yours does, you need to know where this button is on your calculator keypad in order to change your answer into the form you require. Now, you will see above the button that says log on the calculator keypad, there is a purple symbol that says 10 to the power of X. So again, this is accessed using the second button. And it's a useful button to have if we're performing a calculation between two numbers that are in standard form. Now, if you do have two numbers in standard form that you are performing a calculation on, you must make sure that you use those brackets buttons to put a bracket around each number in the calculation so that the calculator will do it correctly. Now, in the bottom right-hand corner above the equals key, you will see a percentage symbol. And that comes in very handy when we want to work out the percentage of a quantity. So, for example, if we wanted to work out 15% of 60 using the calculator, we would press 1, 5, the second button, which enables us to access the percentage operation, then our multiply key, and then the keys 6 and 0. Press equals, which would give us our answer of 9. <laughs> If you enter a particularly long calculation into your calculator and then make a mistake right at the very end of it, or maybe part way through it, you can get rid of any particular number or operation that you've put in in error by using the DEL, or delete key. By pressing that button, it will then remove the previous number or operation from your calculation. Again, as always, read the manual that comes with your calculator properly and make sure you know how to use all the buttons on your own individual calculators.